Hi, I'm Sam from the Naval Undersea Warfare Center at Keyport in Washington State. Keyport primarily repairs and builds torpedoes and unmanned underwater vehicles. So today, we're going to be working on two different projects. We're going to be making our own simple periscope and we're going to be making a bracelet out of UV beads, ultraviolet beads. So first, we're going to be making a periscope. And periscopes are most commonly known for being used on board submarines. They allow submariners to see what's above the surface of the water while they remain hidden below the surface. They are seeing light that is being reflected off of objects that are around them. So if a plane is flying overhead, they're able to see that plane because of the reflected light, but they're also able to see it exactly as it's happening in real time. And that's because light travels very fast. Light travels at approximately 186,000 miles per second. And so when that light is bouncing off of that object, it is being reflected to the periscope, uh, where it is again reflected off of a series of mirrors that are at a 45 degree angle and into the observer's eyes. So before we get started on building our periscope though, we're gonna show you a short video that explains light, color, and waves. Light, it's all around us. But what is it? Where does it come from? And what does light have to do with color? Light is a kind of energy that travels in waves. It is made when matter is heated up or gains energy. Excess energy is released, in part, as light. This energy is called electromagnetic radiation. When we talk about light, we usually mean visible light, which is the light that we can see with our eyes. But there are more types of electromagnetic radiation that are invisible to us, including radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Scientists can detect and measure invisible radiation with special tools. Together with visible light, all these types of radiation are called the electromagnetic spectrum. All electromagnetic radiation travels in waves, but different types have different wavelengths. The wavelength of electromagnetic radiation, or light, is connected to how much energy it has. Light with a longer wavelength, like radio waves, has less energy, while light with a shorter wavelength, like gamma rays, has more energy. Visible light makes up only a tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it includes every color we can see. The most important source of light here on Earth is the sun. We call ordinary sunlight white light, but it actually includes all the colors of visible light. These colors can be revealed when white light goes through a prism. When light passes through a prism or something like it, it slows down a little bit and bends. Some parts of the light slow more than others, and the light spreads out into the colors of the spectrum. If you want to see all of the colors in the visible light spectrum, look no further than a rainbow. Rainbows are made when water droplets in the air bend sunlight much like a prism. Usually when we talk about a rainbow, we say it is made of seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each color has a different wavelength. Red has the longest wavelength in the spectrum of visible light, and violet has the shortest wavelength. All the other colors have wavelengths in between the two. The colors of a rainbow are always in the same order, because the colors are arranged according to their wavelengths. Red is always on the outside, because red has the longest wavelength. And violet is always on the inside, because violet has the shortest wavelength. Electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength outside the visible light spectrum is invisible to our eyes. Light with a longer wavelength than the reddest red our eyes can see is called infrared light. Light with a shorter wavelength than the most violet violet we can see 
is called ultraviolet. When we look at an object, we are actually seeing the light that is bouncing off of it. A green leaf looks green because the leaf absorbs all of the colors in the spectrum except for green, which it reflects. When the green light enters our eyes, our brain tells us it looks green. Things that look white are reflecting almost all of the visible light shining on them, and things that look black are absorbing almost all of the visible light shining on them. Light, both visible and invisible, is all around us. It travels from its source as a wave, bringing energy with it. Without light, there would be no colors. Take a look at the world around you and remember, everything you can see is just different wavelengths of reflected light. Goodbye till next time. So for our periscope, we have some materials that we're going to use to be making our own. We have a periscope blank, which is uh, basically a cardstock cutout, and a small roll of tape. My tape is small decorative tape, although uh, regular Scotch tape would work just fine. I have two uh, glue dots, and I also have two small square mirrors. So the first thing about the periscope you'll want to notice is that the blank, which is what I'm holding in my hand, the periscope blank, on one side with these lines that you'll see on one side of it, you're going to want to place it with those lines facing down. Next, we're going to want to make sure we remove the protective film from each of the mirrors. And we can do that simply by using our fingernail to scrape at one corner of the mirror until we get enough of that protective film that we can pinch it and peel it off. If we don't take that protective film off of the mirrors, then they're going to be too dull in order to work correctly. Next, we're going to want to attach a glue dot to the backside of a mirror before we attach it to our periscope blank. And these glue dots, you'll notice that there's a sheet of paper that's separated from a sheet of plastic on which the two glue dots are. So the best way to attach the glue dots is to just press the mirror onto the plastic sheet with the glue dot and then peel that plastic off so that the glue dot remains stuck to the back side of the mirror. And then we'll take that mirror and we're going to attach it to the periscope blank. Right here where the big tab is on one end of the periscope blank, make sure it's, you're gonna put one on each tab, make sure it's centered in the square portion of the tab. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the second mirror in the same manner. I'm going to press the back side of the mirror onto the glue dot that is still attached to the plastic sheet. I'm gonna press it on there and then peel that plastic off so that the glue dot remains. And then we're gonna take that second mirror and place it onto the other end of the periscope blank onto the square portion of the tab, just like that. Okay, so once you have the two mirrors attached, you're going to want to flip your periscope blank over and those lines that I pointed out earlier, you're going to want to fold it along each of those lines and so that those lines are going to be on the outside of your periscope. Okay, so next we're going to tape it together and when we do that, we want to make sure that this more narrow tab elongated tab is overlapping the other side, okay? So it's gonna go on the outside of the other side of your periscope. So I typically like to use three pieces of tape to secure the body of the periscope together, each piece approximately an inch and a half to two inches long. 
So again, we wanna make sure that the narrow tab is overlapping the other side of your periscope. And I'll go ahead and start with the piece of tape in the center. If you wanna use more or less than three pieces, you can, uh, whatever works best for you. Okay, and once we have the main portion or body of the periscope secured together with tape, we're going to fold in the ends that have the mirrors attached so that the mirrors are on the inside of your periscope. And we're gonna secure that together with another piece of tape. You wanna make sure to do the same thing to each side. So again, make sure that your mirrors are facing the inside of your periscope. And also when you're taping this together, you wanna to make sure that you're not covering the oval holes that you'll find on each side of your periscope. So once you have those ends with the mirrors taped up and the mirrors on the inside, your periscope is complete and it's ready to be used. So when you go to use this, think of how the submariners would use this on a submarine and how they would use it to view objects while keeping themselves hidden. So you might be able to use it to peer around the corner of a wall or around a tree or over a banister. So that's it for today's Periscope activity. Uh, next, we're going to be making a UV bead bracelet. Okay, so now we're going to make our bracelet from UV beads. So these UV beads are special in that their colors do not appear unless they're exposed to ultraviolet light. And that could be from a special UV flashlight or UV light that comes from the sun. So I do have a flashlight here and I'm going to shine a just a regular standard uh, white light on it and we're going to see what happens. So you can see that when we shine a regular flashlight on these beads, nothing happens. There's still a white uh, whitish clear color oh, but when we take a special ultraviolet light and shine it on them you can see their colors start to appear and that's exactly what would happen if these beads were exposed to the sunlight um, because the ultraviolet light that comes from the sun will also make these colors appear UV light from the Sun is outside of the visible spectrum and carries more energy than the light that is within the visible spectrum and that's because the wavelengths are smaller and that is what is activating the colors in these beads. It's kind of like a sunburn. Uh, sunburns are caused by ultraviolet light and the high energy that they carry um, and can cause our skin to either burn or tan. So to make your bracelet, you have a pipe cleaner and you have your beads. So you'll just want to take the beads and you can slide them right over the pipe cleaner. You can put on as many as you'd like. You can use all of your beads or some of them. It's up to you. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna use all of them for mine. There, I think that's plenty. Now, in order to make your bracelet, you could take it and simply twist the ends together, similar to a twist tie, and then slide it over your hand. Or, if you'd like, you can actually weave the two ends together, which is how I'm going to do mine, like so. And if you can't fit your hand through it after you've done this, um, you may want to have somebody to help you um, put it over your wrist and then weave it together. It's a little difficult to try and do it by yourself. You can attach it to your wrist by simply placing it over like this and then twisting the two ends together, just like a twist tie. Like so or you can weave the two ends together. And this particular way of attaching your bracelet might be easier 
if you have somebody to help you. So that way the ends are more seamless. If the pipe cleaner is too long, you can cut it down to size with a pair of scissors. Just make sure that before you cut it that you know exactly how long you're gonna need it and so that after you cut it, it will still fit around your wrist and with enough length to uh, attach the two ends together. So once you have your bracelet, you could do some experimenting if you want. You could take it outside on a cloudy day versus a sunny day to see um, whether or not the colors are more vibrant on a cloudy day versus a sunny day. Um, you can try blocking them, uh, blocking sunlight with various materials such as a curtain. You can put them on a windowsill. You can cover them with a piece of plastic um, to see how different materials block uh, UV sunlight rays. Or even sunscreen. You can put sunscreen on it to see how well the sunscreen prevents the colors from being activated. You may notice that some colors appear while others do not. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed these activities and we'll see you next time.